Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome, or perhaps welcome back, to my channel. I'm so excited to be back today to share my process with you of how I made my first set of cards using the July 2024 sheet load of cards. Now, if you haven't yet downloaded the free printable and you're subscribed to the channel, make sure to check out yesterday's debut video, which is linked in the description box below. Today, as I share my process, I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks. And don't forget, my creative team will be joining me in sharing their first sets. To see what they've created, you can check out the playlist link in the description box, the end card playlist at the end of this video, or you can use the individual links that I also have down in the description box. Using the playlist is probably the easiest since it's a one-stop shop for all of the videos. Also joining today is our July 2024 guest artist, Letty of Party Planner Papery. Make sure to check out yesterday's video to learn more about her. This month's sheet load of cards is the 60th version I have shared here on YouTube. And in honor of that, we're going to make some 5x7 cards. Don't forget, if you're not into 5x7s, or you don't need a whole sheet load of them, I will be back later in the year and I'm going to convert this to A2 because I really do like this layout. As I get into the process, I will tell you about the products and tools that I'm going to be using. I did go over the main products in yesterday's video in a little more detail, but if I do leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I'm going to be cutting both of my pattern papers per the cutting guide. I'm going to start by cutting rows of four inches and three quarters inches. Now, because those three quarter inch rows are kind of skinny and my fingers might get in the way of my trimmer, I am going to cut those first. And I'll be using the three quarter inch mark to the left of the cut line. And I just push the piece of paper from right to left and cut four of those rows. Then I'm going to cut two more from the rest of the paper that are four inches tall. Now there is some scrap left over at the bottom and I did save this to decorate the insides later. Once I was done finished cutting all of the rows, I brought all of my pieces back in and now I'm going to cut these in half to 6 inches wide. Each 12 by 12 paper will get you 12 pieces for the finished cards. Now don't forget you don't need to remember any of the dimensions or anything that I am saying in today's video because you can find out how to download the free printable in yesterday's debut video. I cut the same pieces from the second piece of pattern paper, but I did do this one a little bit differently. I started by cutting off the branding strip at the bottom and then cutting my piece of paper into two 6 inch by 12 inch halves. Then I rotated those and cut them down into the three three quarter inch tall pieces and the two four inch tall pieces. Now you can try either way and decide which way you prefer. I just wanted to show you both so you had different options. Next, I'm going to be cutting the CS1 pieces, which will be eight sheets of cardstock for your card bases and some matting strips. Now, I unfortunately only had seven in one red color, so I did choose another red. But if I don't give these away as a set, nobody will know. Now, those one inch wide strips, just like the three quarter inch wide strips we just had, might be too small to cut with the trimmer. So I'm going to cut those first. I cut a strip off the bottom of the cardstock to eight and a half inches wide by that one inch tall, and then I rotated it and cut the one inch strip off the right or off the left, I guess. It's the right on the printable. Then I cut the remaining piece down to seven inches wide and it was already 10 inches tall for the card base. Now you could go ahead and fold it now, but later I'm gonna use the scoring tool to fold mine in half. To finish cutting with this piece, I'm gonna bring back in those one inch strips and cut them into six inch sections. While I finish cutting the rest of the cardstock, I wanted to stop by with a special channel member shout out. I had some members earn their one year membership badge in June, so I would like to take a minute to say thank you. Scrolling up on screen now are their names.
Thank you so much for your continued support. It keeps me creating here on YouTube and Sheetload of Cards free for all. If you're not a channel member and you would like more information, check out the join button below this video or the link in the description box. The next thing that we'll need cut are the partial sentiment circles and bonus this month. If you're a channel member, you will have access to an SVG file for electronic cutters. I did go ahead and use this before I got started and off camera, and I was able to get eight of those partial circles from one sheet of cardstock. If you are a channel member who would like access to this file, I will have a post later today on the membership tab, which I'll link below, telling you how you can download it. You'll want to look for the post that shows the graphic that's up in the corner now. Now, if you don't have an electronic cutter, or you're not a member yet, I will show you how to cut this partial circle. For this, you'll need one and a half sheets of cardstock. I did go ahead and pre-cut a circle that's right almost at three inches. Yours might be bigger or smaller, depending on your sentiment or focal image you're gonna be using. Once you've die cut your circle, you're then gonna cut approximately three quarters of an inch off the bottom. And you'll see here what that looks like and it's pretty much identical to the one that I cut with my electronic cutter. All the cutting is now done so I brought in my score buddy so I can score each of my card bases. Now I do have the smaller size which is exactly seven inches tall so I did kind of have to be careful when making my score lines but then I could just fold it, reinforce the fold with the bone folder and now I have card bases. I continued scoring and folding until I had eight total card bases. And then before I put the score buddy away, I do want to keep it out for just a little bit longer. And that's because I'm gonna have the ledge on that side help me put together my strips and their mats. If you don't have a score buddy with a ledge, you could always use a paper trimmer, a misty, anything that just has a little lip for a lining. Now what I'm going to do is bring in my adhesive and I'm going to put a strip on the back of the pattern paper. Then using that ledge, I'm going to line up my piece of cardstock right along it and then place my pattern paper right smack down on that ledge as well and just move it left or right to get it centered. Now both of those will be aligned at the bottom and they're nice and straight now with the mat. This is definitely one of my favorite card making hacks is to use edges like this for aligning. Let me know if you've ever tried it down in that comment section below and maybe share one of your favorite crafty hacks. Once those were all matted, I'm still going to keep my score buddy out and I'm going to show you how you can add your strips to your larger piece of pattern paper using that same technique. This time you're going to grab two of the opposite pattern strips. So for instance, I'm getting the poinsettia strips and they'll go on the striped background. And I'm going to add adhesive to the back just like before. Now I wanted to bring in my printable to get an idea of where to place the strips, but they definitely don't have to be perfect. And using that same technique by placing my pattern paper against that ledge and the strips as well, I'm going to get these put in place. Now, if you don't want to try this or you don't have anything with the ledge, you can definitely do this just regular there on your desktop. So I'll show you one that way with the poinsettia background and then the striped strips. When you hold these side by side, you're not really gonna be able to tell a difference. You can just pick whichever way is easiest for you. For me, I prefer using the ledge, so I brought the score buddy back in to finish adding the strips to the pattern paper. Now, while I continue to work on that, I wanted to stop by with a little invitation, kind of a reminder if you've already seen it, but this fall, I'm gonna be participating in Not Too Shabby's Enjoy This Life Virtual Retreat. This virtual craft retreat will take place on the weekend of September 14th and 15th, and registration is free. During my class, I will be sharing an exclusive sheet load of cards that's going to show you how to make some adorable mini slimlines quickly and easily using 6x6 pattern paper and ephemera. 
I am just one of eight instructors that will be sharing classes during this fun and free weekend. Up on screen now is a look at all of the teachers. I know just by seeing who is teaching that there's going to be a variety of styles and techniques. You definitely won't want to miss it. To get more details, I have a video linked in the description box below. The thumbnail is up on screen now and it just tells you more about the event and gives you a look at the kit that you can pre-order if you want to craft along using the same products that we do. Hope to see you there! Once all of the pattern paper pieces were put together, it was time to get these put onto some card bases. So I brought those back in, and now to get these on there, all I'm going to do is add adhesive to the back, and then center as best as possible as I can on the front. Now with a wider border like this, sometimes it's a little bit harder to center it. So I like to kind of put my piece down lightly, see if I like the margins around it, and then if I do, press it in place. Now sometimes when I go to put my pattern paper down and then check the borders, I don't like it. So that's why with the ATG, it doesn't stick too permanently right away so I can make adjustments. If you want to see what today's cards look like with a slightly smaller border, I did get a sneak peek last night of Carmen's cards and she has actually matted those pattern papers. So definitely make sure to check out her video if you're interested in seeing that. Now I'm going to show you how I stamped my sentiments. For this, I'll be wishing you a happy and joyful holiday from Honey Bee Stamps Bitty Buzzword Set and I'll be stamping it with the Brussels Sprout ink. I did go ahead and get out my mini Misty so that I can set my sentiment up once on it and then I'll be able to stamp it eight total times quickly and easily. I got both of my stamps adjusted there on my partial circle where I thought they looked good and then I got this inked up and stamped. I did want to go ahead and get a nice solid green so I stamped it twice and I used a pressure tool again just for a better impression. Then that looked great, so all I had to do was continue to ink up and stamp on each of the remaining pieces. Once those were all done, it was time to get them put on the card fronts. You could adhere it flat, but since my card was pretty flat so far, I do want to add a little dimension. So I'm going to bring in some foam tape and put some strips on the back of each sentiment piece. When you go to place your sentiment on the card front, you can do it like the printable shows or you can move this around. It's totally up to you. I did go ahead and leave it pretty much where it shows on the sketch, making sure that the bottom of my partial circle aligned with the top of that bottom matting strip. I added the rest of the foam tape off camera and then finished getting my sentiments put onto the card fronts. Now I have two different looks, but if you had like a couple double-sided pattern papers and the fronts and the backs all went together, you could mix and match those for a wider variety. And like most of my card sets, I like to finish it off with a little sparkle. So I brought in Tailored Expressions bits and pieces in the gold glitter drops and I thought these would go well with the centers of the poinsettia flowers. I'm going to be adding some across the front of the card using Barely Art Liquid Glue and my Rainbow Jewel Picker. I laid down I think five dots of glue on the card front just going from the upper left to the bottom right and then I gave that a second or two to get tacky and then I picked up those pieces and got them added to the card fronts. I finished that off camera and I also cut a piece of white cardstock for the personal message on the inside and I used up the rest of the pattern paper to add a little decoration. And here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together this sheet load of 5x7 cards and got some tips along the way. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of the team member videos. I know that they would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. 
I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.